Hello there. In this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, we will learn how to spawn our grass or foliage from within our material using the grass node or the grass map. Before starting, I have prepared some things in advance like this landscape right here. It's similar to what we did in the 100 km square video. So if you want to create it from scratch, I recommend going back to that video. And one other thing we did was scattering these mannequins all over our landscape. When working with bigger landscapes and foliage and trees and grass, we always want a sense of scale of what our character would look like from their perspective, how it is scaled respective to all those things. So we scattered it using a procedural foliage spawner. It's the same what we did in the previous procedural foliage spawner video. It simply scatters our mannequin all over the landscape. Next, the material that we are using for this. So it's a simple material. Here we have a layer blend directly going into the output. You may not see this by default. If you click on it and go in the settings, I have ticked this use material attributes right here. So if it is unticked, it will look something like this. So if you tick this, it will take a material attribute as its input. Here the layer blend is getting the inputs from these texture layers and all these layers when we go into select mode and landscape and under paint we will have all these layers. So if we were to add another layer right here, we click this add and let's name this extra layer. Now if we save this and go back here, you'll see that we have that extra layer that we created just now. Since we don't need this, we'll delete it. Another way of creating a layer is to use a layer sample. So if we search for layer sample and let's name it again. Let's name it add layer this time. Now similar to what happened with the layer brand right here, now we have that extra add layer added. So to create grass from within our material, we would need a grass node. So if we search grass right here, we'll have the landscape grass output. We click it. Now here we can have as many grass types as we want and we can simply name this. So let's name this global grass. And now this grass needs an input. So to create that input, we'll go into the content browser. And when we right click and under foliage, we have that landscape grass type rename it as lgt underscore test now we can drag and drop this or have it selected and click this button right here so it will select that directly let's open the landscape grass type so it also has an array and we can add as many static mesh here as we want so if you see we have a static mesh and a bunch of additional settings now some of these are similar to what we saw in the procedural foliage spawner so we'll delete this and add one element to our array so here let's search for field grass and we have static mesh called sm underscore field grass one now this is the clump of grass that we get with the open world demo now we are using this as the static mesh now let's save this now in this grass type we have a grass mesh which will be spawned on our landscape now all we need to do is tell where to spawn this grass now we can tell it to spawn it in a particular layer for that we will right click and search for layer sample now from all these layers we will choose a layer now under parameter name we will put the name of the layer on which we want the grass to spawn. Here we want to spawn it on the grass layer. So we'll put grass right here. Now you need to make sure that this name matches the layer. If it is not matching, then it will simply create a new layer. Now if we plug it in and save it, let's come back to the landscape. And now if you see there is grass everywhere. Now we can tell how our character will look in the grass. And if we move over to let's say the cliff right here. So you'll see that there is no grass on the cliff and grass is only there if the grass layer is present. Let's talk about some of the problems right off the bat. So the first problem is this. So you see we have a flow layer right here and if we go closer, you'll see that it's completely covered with grass. Although we only put grass right here, it's spawning on this layer as well. Now that is because the flow layer and the grass layer both are present right here. To visualize this, we'll go to the landscape mode and under lit, we'll go to visualizes and layer debug. So if you look right here, now we'll put red color to our grass. The grass layer is present here. And if we go to the flow layer and click green here, you'll see that green is also present. That is because both are blending and the flow layer has a higher width than the grass right here. That's why we are saying the flow and not the grass. So how do we fix that? So the first thing that comes in mind is remove the grass layer completely. So if we go to landscape and under paint, we'll put the tool strand to one, tick the flow layer, and now just paint it. Now that the grass layer is completely gone, there is no grass spawning right here. Now this is not just a manual method. When importing, you can have layers which are already separated so that there is no weight of grass in the mask so you don't have to do it manually. But then you'll have to create your mask already considering that this would happen and you will subtract your mask from each other. Now that might make blending the layers a bit difficult. 
so what's the alternative so before doing that let's understand what this grass node needs the grass needs an input which tells it where to spawn the grass now that opens us with a bunch of options since it's telling it here that it will go in the grass instead of saying that spawn it on grass we can say spawn it on grass but not on the flow let me show you what that means mathematically so we'll create another layer sample so let's just duplicate it with ctrl d and let's name this flow so this time we are saying that spawn on the grass but not on the flow so we are subtracting those two layers so when we save this now if we take a look at our landscape spawn the grass in the grass layer but not on the flow area now let's move to another part of the landscape so something like in the lake area so you'll see the grass bleeding into the layer now it's again the same this is where both the layers are blending so both of the layer are present that's why the grass is also spawning right here and this also happens in the nature as well and it also makes the blending much easier and depending on what you are going for you can also subtract that layer again if you want finer control so you'll see that this grass layer ends right here and the cliff starts right here but the grass is also growing again on the cliff maybe you don't want to subtract the cliff layer so what's actually happening in this area is ground and the cliff both are present so with weight blend at any point there is weight equal to one present of all the total layers so here if you assume there is 0.8 of the grass and 0.2 of the cliff and that's why the grass is more prominent here and the grass texture is shown in area like this the cliff has a higher weight so let's say 0.7 and the grass is 0.3 that's why the cliff is shown but the grass is still spawning which means the grass layer is still present right here and instead of subtracting the cliff layer we can tell this grass that only spawn grass in areas where the grass layer has a weight higher than 0.6 or maybe 0.7 or something like that and the next question is how do we do that we can do that right here after the sample grass so we'll make a scalar variable right here so we'll search for scalar parameter or if you hold s on your keyboard and left click then it will create it for you so let's name it grass layer weight and now we will multiply these two so the shortcut for that is hold m and click this is multiply and now we are multiplying these two and put it in the subtract right here by default let's make it one here the layer sample is telling this grass output that spawn the grass wherever this layer is present so by default it has a layer weight one now if you multiply it with let's say 0.5 then it will be half of that layer's weight we are making it a scalar variable so that we can easily access it from the material instance now if you open the material instance and search for that variable grass layer weight and let me show you what happens if we decrease it so let's say layer weight of 0.6 maybe lower so maybe let's say 0.1 now you'll see that most of that grass is gone if we compare it here it is with 1 and here is 0.1 maybe it will be easier if you look it from here so here 1 and 0.1 makes a big big difference but now it's reaching in areas like this so the grass has a much less density right here so with the scalar value we can fine tune it maybe 0.4 so we'll choose a value which does not affect the grass too much in this area so maybe 0 0.7 0 0.6 so maybe 0 0.6 now this doesn't mean you have to go lower than one you can also go the other way around so maybe let's say two and this time the grass will start to invade other layers as well so it's all grown grass at this point and this way we can control the weight now this is a common misconception we don't really need this so if you imagine a landscape let's imagine a square so that is our landscape and for the grass input we need to tell it which area is white and which area is black by using the layer sample we are using the already created layer so with grass we already have painted it on the landscape so it will tell that wherever that grass layer is the value of pixel is one and wherever it is not present the value is zero so it will not spawn so we can use simple mathematics right here so if we press 1 and click it we'll have a constant if we put it directly and here if we put the value 1 that means all the landscape is right now grass will spawn everywhere now if you take a look wherever we go the grass is present now how do we use that to our advantage so we just need to tell it where the white pixel is and where the black pixel is how else can we do that we can also do that with a custom mask with the texture so let's use a texture this time so let's bring in a texture sample when building the landscape i made an extra map called the lake overflow in this landscape let's imagine there is a lot of rain so the lake will start to overflow that means these areas that are closer to the lake should get more water than these areas that are far away so that means some species that favor water will grow right here 
this is exactly what this map is so after importing we'll change the compression setting to mask let's save this and come back here and we'll choose lake overflow from right here so making sure this is set to mask this time if we input this now we don't want to do this because it needs a scalar input and we are giving it three channel or a vector value that's why we will use the red output right here and connect the uvs now if you see there is no grass right here and as we move towards the lake now there is grass so this area which is closer to the lake has the grass and the area further away has no grass if you want to visualize it even better let's connect this texture right here into the output of our material so we'll create a make material attribute right here put this in the base color now this is the same texture which is going into the grass so it will show you where that red layer is so right here if you go closer you'll see that the grass is growing in the white and as we move towards the black there is no grass so just like that we can use a texture for our grass we can also mix these two together so if we do something like this so we are multiplying this texture right here now this time what all this math is saying is now first of all the grass will spawn in this area where the texture sample is it will spawn in these areas only if this grass layer is present let's change this flow to the lake so we are subtracting the lake so that this time there will be no grass in the lake layer so if you look at this this is where the river is even though that white texture is present here the lake layer is subtracted that means no grass present here and here the grass layer is present and the mask is present so both are present that's why the grass is here and similar to that there is no grass in the black area now to save performance we can use splat maps here so the splat map can have four different masks within one texture so when we load the splat map we can have one output from the red going into this and we can add maybe more of these and connect the green one here blue one here and maybe the alpha mask right here now that we know it needs a scalar input we can do a bunch of math before it so it opens us with limitless possibilities so let me show you another one of these so we'll connect the layer blend back and this time instead of using this we'll use its splat map of course so here is a splat map i've created so i painted red color right here and green color here blue color here and then we also have a alpha channel so the black is the alpha so we'll put that texture right here and this time before the uvs we'll multiply it with the tiling value so again m left click s left click let's rename it for each tiling and connect to this so let's say by default it's 200 and instead of connecting the layer plan let's do this again so we can clearly see what's happening everywhere so we are connecting the red channel right here let's delete all these now if you take a look that splat map is tiling all across our landscape we can choose the tiling amount from right here so we can maybe have 400 so it will be an even smaller tile so this is our mannequin so that's how big the tile is can also go smaller tiles let's stick to 400 for now now this time you'll see the grass is spawning on the white areas there is some grass bleeding in the black areas and now we can apply all that logic back to it one other advantage that it gives us so let's connect the rgb right here so we can see each layer and maybe make two more so here we can say tall grass here let's say flower this time the green is going in the tall grass blue is going into the flower let's create landscape grass type for these so we'll duplicate this name it tall grass put this here duplicate it okay, let's open the tall grass so maybe this grass let's increase the scale so it's obvious and for the flower maybe a flower like this we are taking red so it's more visible and with all this setup and the rgb going in the base color now we'll see this splat map all across our landscape and if we go closer to it let's increase the tile size maybe 200 so something like this so now from the material the red should have the global grass which is our field grass grass is mostly in the red area so it was the same as before and in green is our tall grass so let me change the perspective a bit and this tall grass is mostly in the green so take a look at something like right here and right here now the color is bleeding out to other areas as well if you strictly want it in green then you will subtract that color channel just like what we did with the layer sample and finally when we look at blue this is where those red plants are
Now let's talk about some of the settings the landscape grass type has. The first one is obviously the mess that we want to spawn and similar to procedural foliage spawner there is override material. Here if you want to override the mess material then we can do that. Next is the grass density. We can dock it here and see it updating in real time. If we decrease the grass density then you'll see we have much lower density of that grass. Now here sometimes you may get stuck and it's not updating. So we have a console command to flush out the cache for the grass. If you type in the console command grass.fl then it will show you this raster trust cache. We click this and enter then the grass will rebuild and it should update. We can see how density is affecting our grass. Next the use grid and placement jitter are to jitter the location of some of the grass. So something like the grass in wild will use a value of 1 and for something maybe like crops and something that people grow in lines. Let's put it 0 and see. It's not much visible from this grass. Let's take a look at this flower and make the placement jitter to 0. So with placement jitter 0 they are more uniform and if we increase it then they are just randomly scattered in the directions. Next is the start cull and the end cull distance. Same as procedural spawner. End cull is where it will disappear and start cull is where it will start to disappear. So by default it is 10,000. So let's do something like 5000 to 6000. So after 6000 this flower should completely disappear. Let's do a lower value so it's easier to spot 500 to 1000. Now here if we move up now you'll see that after a 500 distance they will start to disappear which is right here and if we go to 1000 everything will disappear. Now you would want to set it wisely to optimize for performance. So in scenarios like this how we can optimize it. We don't want to see this grass at much distance. We will maybe set it maybe 2000 to 3000. And for the grass it can be 6000 to 8000. And for the tall grass 5000 to 6000. Now setting the cull distance will save us some of the performance. Now if your mesh has LODs you can choose how many of those LODs are getting displayed. Minus 1 means it's turned off by default. You can change the value to 1, 2 or maybe 3. Under scaling we have 3 uniform free and log xy. So under uniform xyz will use the same scaling value so here if you put maybe 0.6 to 1 to all those direction will use that value and if you are using free then we can scale it in each x separately and with the log xy the xy will use the same value next the random rotation is the same it will random it in random direction align to surface will mean that if there is an area like the cliff and the grass will grow in the normal direction of that cliff so let's say right here so here you'll see this is how the grass is growing if you take this and untake this then the grass will always be vertical regardless of the surface. Now these are all the grass settings. Now with these you can create some beautiful looking grasslands. So now you can mix match different species and settings to see what result suits you better. So here is one such result where I am using this grass species everywhere and then this tall grass in some of the patches and then in another one we are using this one. Now the question is where should we use these grass maps and where should we use the procedural foliage spawner. So the procedural foliage spawner saves the location of each of the assets which it is simulating and we mostly use it for medium to tall vegetation something like trees or maybe bigger ferns or bushes all those goes into the procedural foliage spawner because those are the things that the player will mostly interact with so they have all the collision all that stuff and for smaller foliage like grass and clovers and leaves for all that we'll use the landscape grass and book. I hope this is helpful feel free to share your results in the discord server I'll put a link in the description if you haven't joined I'll see you next time